coming back to really the the Nakamoto upgrade and SBTC. Where every time I talk about this or every time we talk about it, I still get goosebumps. With uh, Nakamoto coming and um, you know the five second time of Nakamoto will bring Bitcoin DeFi a user experience that rivals not Ethereum but also. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Bitcoin Builders Breakdown, where we are talking to some of the most notable builders within the Bitcoin economy and talking about how they got started, what they're building in, and kind of what's next to come for those of you who are looking to begin your journey building on Bitcoin. I'm your host today, Kyle Elika, and I am joined by the outstanding, the wonderful, the one and only Tenda of Alex. Tenda, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got in the industry, and also Alex itself for the few people who do not know about the great company, Alex. Well, thank you for having me. It's really so good to see you here, and I love your background, by the way. Look like you are, you. you know, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Well, so <laughs> my name is Chen De Xu. I'm the co-founder of uh, Alex. Alex is uh, one of the first, I would say, DeFi protocol built solely on Bitcoin. And together with my co-founder, wonderful co-founder, Rachel, who is based in uh, Hong Kong, we started Alex, uh, I was end of May, 2021, that we decided to drop everything you know, including our kids and husband, we decided to build this defect. And um, yeah, and here we are now, November 2023, we are now, I would say, one of the biggest DeFi on Bitcoin. And uh, we are about to touch real life. Um, so I'm really excited about our journey so far. That's great. And let's maybe start with a, a table setting question. And that is, what is DeFi, right? What is decentralized finance? It's evolved a lot since the term has been introduced in Web3 and to most of our lives. But for you and the team, how do you define DeFi or decentralized finance? Sure. So um, DeFi, the D stands for decentralized and the FI stands for finance. So it is a financial system built on blockchain technology that enables financial services. And if you think about what financial services are, these are lending, borrowing, exchanges, et cetera, et cetera. So all these financial services, it is to be operated without those traditional, you know, centralized intermediaries such as banks. But then you ask yourself, well, how do you do that if you don't have a centralized, uh, you know, authorities to, you know, help you to honor those, uh, those uh, you know, contracts. And that's how uh, we use uh, blockchain technology, which is that we use smart contract instead. So there's no centralized authority like banks um, that has to approve your transaction. Instead, it utilizes blockchain technology. So it's almost like a public uh, Google sheet, right? But who secure those Google sheets or who validate those uh, Google sheets entry? These are validators such as miners or stakers. Um, so that's um, decentralized finance or DeFi. Got it. And, and since we are here on the Bitcoin builders breakdown, we're talking all about building on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin itself, both the network and the asset, are more than a decade uh, established at this point. You know, going 14 on to 15 years uh, since uh, we had the Genesis block in uh, 2009. And that said, there's been a lot of development. Uh, over the last really 15 years around Bitcoin, but has there been any DeFi on Bitcoin? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, a year ago, this time I flew to uh, Duke Fuqua where I taught for two years. And um, I was telling Professor uh, Campbell Harvey that we are building a DeFi on Bitcoin. He, he laughed at me on my face. And I would say one year later, you know, who is laughing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, as you rightly mentioned, the Bitcoin created peer-to-peer -peer cash in 2008 with a decentralized payment network. So payment network alone is, you know, is a transfer of value in the present. So for example, Kyle, um, you wrote a wonderful book 
right? So you, you provide your services and I want to pay your book. So I transfer in you a uh, Bitcoin. So that's pretty much it is a payment system. Now finance is more finance is transfer of uh, value over time. So for example, if I can't pay your book because it's very expensive, right? So I have to, I have to pay 12 months payment with uh, you know, at the moment is about 5% interest. This is finance, right? It's really transfer the value through the time. That's why I like to call finance like a time machine. I have been saying this. I think people think, what are you talking about? That's a time machine. You transfer the value. Now for this, we have to enter into a contract and that's what DeFi is about, right? So DeFi is essentially rather than rely on the legal system and human institution to enforce this contract, we rely on smart contract. Now, coming back to Bitcoin, why or how to build a uh, DeFi on Bitcoin? Uh, you know, Bitcoin is built to maximize the decentralization and security, and it is extremely resistant to changes. That's all really, really important for a financial system for money. But in order for a uh, Bitcoin to be scalable, programmable, uh, we must utilize, you know, a layer two on Bitcoin such as stacks, right? So it's a smart country layer that I think really very, very important is that it share the consensus with Bitcoin. So that's why we chose, you know, Alex to launch on stacks because DeFi needed this immutability uh, of Bitcoin for mass adoption. And, you know, now it's a uh, two years since uh, our mainnet launch. Um, everything that occurred on Alex, whatever you do on Alex behind, it is all the, you know, the final settlements are all on Bitcoin. So I think that's something that when you think about it, it's something really, really powerful. Now this year is like, you know, the original protocol, right? It profoundly changed Bitcoin. Uh, the Bitcoin L1 is no longer just money layer. It become a data layer as well. What does it mean? If you look at the BIC20 token, the very dominant non-fungible token standard on Bitcoin at the moment, right? This can, in a sense, be considered as a Bitcoin L1 DeFi. So that's why you know, at Alex, we very, very quickly became very deeply involved in this BIT20 ecosystem. So for example, we launched the first uh, order book to, for people to trade the BIC 20 tokens. And uh, this is the first of these kinds completely decentralized. So behind the scene, what we actually have done is that we merged those, we call it Bitcoin L1 asset and its derivatives with the L2 programmability and scalability, right? I think that's ultimately what Alex is here for. It's really seamlessly bridging L1 and L2. So, so that you can have a more intuitive, you know, user-centric experience. You can do limit order, market order, etc., etc. This is not possible on Bitcoin itself. And you don't want that either because Bitcoin has, you know, limited to the PSBT for transfer, etc., etc. And, but guess what? We launched this order book, which is very powerful. People have a very, cent you know, very centralized exchange type of experience. We have user coming, you know, say, we want AMMs. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are about to, we are about to roll out the AMA. AMM um, this year, but I think these are all good, right? You have all these users, they want to exchange, they want, they want finance on Bitcoin, but as a protocol, we want to think about, you know, what is needed in terms of infra, right? We know what you want to do. You need exchanges, but we need to make sure that everything is secure. Otherwise we are not going to be scalable. Um, that's why uh, one thing which is very, very special about Bitcoin is that the, the meta protocols like BRC20 on Bitcoin, it requires this off-chain indexing or valid uh, validation. Rachel, like I always like to quote my co-founder, she said, he's just a guy with his Google sheet. What happens if he has a heart attack? <laughs> so that's why we have been uh, working with <laughs> Lots of really, really good option indexer and also Domo, who is a creator of the BIS20. We are rolling out the Bitcoin Oracle. You can think about it as a, almost like a chain link, mini chain link for Bitcoin L1 asset and its derivatives, right? 
So it provides a tamper-proof censorship-resistant indexing of events of a meta protocols. So with the Bitcoin chain as its ultimate source of truth, it removes the need of relying on a single centralized object index. So this is something really, really important. Um, and the second, so this is one piece of infra that we have been building. And the second piece of infra is really the bridge, right? We believe we want to bring the Bitcoin to the world. We want to bring the world to the Bitcoin. You need a bridge, right? So um, as we speak in less than 12 hours, uh, we are rolling out the Bitcoin bridge. It's first of this kind. And it will launch, we will launch the testnet in less than 24 hours. Now, Bitcoin bridge is not any kind of bridge. Why is it so different? Well, Bitcoin Bridge is a key providing the native like Bitcoin DeFi experience on L1, right? Users, you can use a native Bitcoin or L1 asset issued on Bitcoin and interact with the L2 smart contract. You see, that's the difference of, uh, you know, EVM type of bridges. It's fundamentally, it's more secure, it's more faster, right? Because it's not the typical cross-chain bridge. So the, this, the, this unique relationship between, that's why we chose to build on Stacks, right? Because there's a unique relationship between Bitcoin and Stacks, meaning that Bitcoin bridge does not require validators to validate, right? It does not need to weigh this uh, extra tool, like a mitigate this real risk, right? So Bitcoin bridge role is therefore, is really integrating L2 smart contract with L1 assets. So not really just like other bridges that's an asset transfer. So I said a lot about the infra we are building behind. Um, I'm going to take a pause and then let you ask me questions. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I mean, that's a good encapsulation of, you know, the history of DeFi on Bitcoin, along with Alex's role within Bitcoin DeFi. You and the team are finding opportunities and uh, gaps within the infrastructure and middleware layer pushing this category of DeFi on Bitcoin forward. Uh, and that said, you know, the Alex Bitcoin Bridge, SBTC, and the Stacks Nakamoto upgrade, uh, as those come to launch over not only the next 12 to 24 hours, but over the next couple of months, what impact will those three major player parts? Uh, have on DeFi on Bitcoin. And so starting from Alex, and now I talk about why Nakamoto and SBTC are so um, important milestone for Stacks as well as Bitcoin DeFi. So I say ultimately Alex's role, you think about what Alex is, right? It's a finance layer of Bitcoin. So we focus on finance and what is our goal? We want to bring finance onto Bitcoin, right? At the moment, I don't think there are other you know, dApps who solely focus on this, bring finance onto Bitcoin. And what does it mean is that we basically are there to provide all the functionalities to seamlessly integrate Bitcoin L1 asset with L2 capabilities. That's it, right? That's why we have, uh, you know, L1 Launchpad, L1 Order Bowl, L1 AMM, and then the infra in order for the capital to flow into Bitcoin L1 as well as for uh, Bitcoin itself to have more useful uh, DeFi uh, capabilities and we need to build the bridge. But in order for those things to be secure for the user, we need to build the Oracle. So that's so good. Now, coming back to really the, the Nakamoto upgrade and SBTC, right? These are game changers for DeFi on Bitcoin. You know, I'm really, really excited about Nakamoto upgrade every time I talk about this or every time when you talk about it, I still get goosebumps, right? So time after time, you know, you sit in front of your computer or, you know, how patient we were to wait for this, you know, 10 minutes, you know, I just want to swap something, et cetera, et cetera. And you say, okay, you know what, you know, it's decentralized. So I'm willing to, you know, pay for that time, right? But with uh, Nakamoto coming and, um, you know, the five second time of Nakamoto will bring Bitcoin DeFi a user experience that rivals not Ethereum, but also Solana. So um, 
you know, Alex has a beautiful UI, you know, thanks to our designer and engineers. But once we have the UX of five second trade time, right? New users from other chain will want to come, but also users from the main mainstream will want to come as well, right? Because you have behind, you have behind, you have the security and immutability of Bitcoin, but you have the experience of, you know, anything you can compete with. So that's the Nakamoto. SBTC, I call it, you know, the golden asset. And that's something we have been uh, waiting for, right? Um, no, I think we know the, the significance, but the people outside um, stacks might not, right? There's a lot of different type of wrapped Bitcoin. You know, most of them are in the form of WBTC, which is a custodial solution. Nothing bad about it. But I think we in this sector, we all dream about decentralized Bitcoin that you can use it in smart contract. And I think SBTC, as far as my limited knowledge tells me, is that this is the most decentralized non custodial solution of a Bitcoin that the user can have the very Bitcoin native kind of experience, but the, the asset can be used in smart contract, which means you are empowered with a time machine to transfer values throughout the time. Um, so that's what I think uh, at Alex team, we are so excited about these two particular upgrade. I think it bring us from, um, you can say it bring us from, you know, um, wire service, right? You have to wait for so many days into, uh, you know, Venmo, PayPal type of experience. Obviously these are not a great example because both are very centralized. But this is the kind of experience that we are looking for with these two uh, rollout and upgrade. Well, this is exciting. And, and Chenda, where can everyone go to find you online, but also uh, the Alex team, Alex itself, and begin to utilize not just the platform, but maybe even some of the infrastructure that you and the team have put together? Sure. So um, our app is app.alexlab.co. And uh, on Twitter, we use Twitter like our tongue just like everybody else. Um, it's uh, alexlab uh, BTC. So that's our Twitter handle. I think these two are good places to go. And uh, when you go on the Twitter, obviously there are all the possible links like our Discord um, and other, other uh, places that we use to roll out our news as well as apps. Um, one very important milestone for us today is that the governance vote of a spinning off the operation of the bridge, because it's such an important piece of infra, we are just so stretched. So we need to find an um, independent team to manage the operation of that. So the governance vote is, um, is, has passed. So X-Link, so the Bitcoin bridge will be operated as something completely independent from Alex. So I hope um, people will follow the new Twitter, which is excellent BTC. And I was told that there will be some reward system coming using that bridge in the very beginning. So um, I'm eagerly waiting for that news to come out. Wonderful. Well, Chenda, thank you for joining us today. And thank you to the Alex team and all of your co-founders and team members for all the work that you have done pushing forward. Uh, DeFi on Bitcoin. And thank you to all of you for tuning in to another edition of Bitcoin Builders Breakdown. I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. Until next time, everyone keep building.